Hey there, and welcome to Vetrepreneur Spotlight, where we take you deeper behind the scenes of some of the fantastic companies that we're working with right here at the National Vantage Memorial and Museum. I'm your host, Justin Locke, coming to you from inside the Museum Exchange. This month, for the month of March, we've got a special guest with us, Phil Sussman, who is the co-founder of American Yogi. Hey, Phil, man, thanks for being here with us. How's it going, man? It's, uh, it's an honor to be back with the, with the museum. Yeah, we love to have you. Uh, so if you remember back, we have Phil with us for the 20 year war where he was featured there. Uh, but Phil's got a whole bunch of other things going on with American Yogi. But of course, we start here with your military service, which makes you a veterpreneur. Uh, you mind talking about it, Phil, how you got started in the military, what your career looked like? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I started my career in 2012. I commissioned out of University of South Florida and became an armor officer. Uh, from there, I ended up uh, in the CAV, and I was a scout platoon leader and an, and an XO and uh, worked my way up to the shop, to staff. Um, and then about four years into my career or three years into my career, I went to uh, Special Operations Civil Affairs Assessment and, and Selection. Uh, I was selected and served for another, let's see, I, 10 years total uh, in the military. I broke my back in uh, 2015 and continued my service past it, uh, continued to beat up my body. And by the end, I was a medical retiree, uh, just about a year ago now. That's like the, the condensed version deployed <laughs> three times. My last deployment was, uh, was Syria as a operations chief. Awesome. Yeah. So for those of us at home who don't really know what civil affairs or CA does, would you mind kind of just touching in on that real quick of what you did within the military for your special operations side of it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, soft CA, it, it's a really cool, um, it's a really cool job. It, it was, it was right up my alley because essentially you're going, you're, you're talking to people. Uh, what I, what I love about it is, you know, people look to you to be the, as expert as you can on a, whether it's a culture or a place you're going or a community or, you know, tribal dynamics, we like to consider ourselves, you know, the, the people's people. Uh, our job is to get out in the community, talk to local leaders, understand what's happening, and take that information and bring it back to people that action on that, essentially. Uh, we're, we're the interlocutors between civil society and both federal government and military and anyone that's interested in, in what's happening on the ground. Yeah, and kind so, of the jack, jack of all trades. <laughs> very much so. And I love working with CA as much as I possibly can. Um, but that kind of trait transitioned over when you started American Yogi. How did that kind of transition go for you when you got out of the military and then kind of starting American Yogi? Yeah, so I actually started American Yogi while I was in the civil affairs pipeline. Um, I, I had the idea a few years back. I was I was doing yoga at the time. I was recovering from a you know, pretty uh, traumatic back injury. I lost my best friend. We lost a couple other soldiers at the time. I was in a a pretty terrible place uh, physically and mentally. And I just decided I needed something. My wife pushed me toward yoga. I practiced for, you know, probably a year, year and a half, two years. And then after going to a yoga festival where there was no representation for men, that was sort of when I decided that something needed to change. And I wanted to try and be the catalyst or one of the catalysts of, those, of that change. Um, so when I started it, it was actually really, it was really difficult. Um, I didn't, I didn't know fully what I was getting into. We wanted to, to make shirts for men, yoga, like shirts oriented toward mindfulness, yoga for men to try to get them into the studio when uh, maybe they wouldn't have seen it as an option uh, before. So we were hustling shirts out of the back of our trucks, our cars, you know, we were going to every event we could, um, constantly chatting online with people and trying to, to get them to understand what it is we did and why, why we were doing it. Um, as the years went by, you know, we, we sort of, you know, rolled with things. And as more time went on, I realized how much what I was doing in the military carried over. Um, I, I would almost say it's a direct parallel to, to American Yogi. You know, my you know, main job in American Yogi is engaging with the community. You know, I engage with the military community. I engage with the, you know, the veteran community. I engage with the, the civilian, the yoga community, the wellness. Now it's the surfing community, the um, psychedelic community. Now that we're doing healing um, with them. It's, so, so what I see my job at, as is, is sort of the, you know, if it was a big web, I'm sort of the spider that's, that's weaving it all together. So, you know, maybe, you know, this group over here doesn't necessarily talk to this group over here, but they all 
like American Yogi and what we represent, and we're all actually part of that same web. So I'm sort of I'm sort of the the connector and, and the glue, and also the bearer of the message. So how does American Yogi kind of go about all of this? I know you have all these different hats you wear and the the webs you weave, but kind of what's the American Yogi's overall mission? And uh, if you mind talking about the retreats, I think this would be a great time as well. Yeah. So originally we. We were on social media and that was where we were doing all of our of our connection with the community. And then eventually we said, OK, we've we've been in the online space. We've met a lot of people virtually. Let's let's get into the public space. And then we started doing festivals in Southern Pines, North Carolina, where I was stationed. At, I was stationed at Bragg. And then um, some time went on and we decided, let's let's try doing retreats. Let's bring people to actually experience, you know, the healing and experience the yoga and experience the transformation um, in person. Uh, so this is all kind of a general uh, evolution of the company. And and now, really, after after years of kind of immersing ourselves in the wellness space, we decided that's where we see ourselves making the, the most impact, um, not only on this community, but on, on communities at large that, that may not even know who we are yet. You know, our, our mission is to bring healing, to bring, you know, wellness and mindfulness and uh, essentially um, – I don't know the holistic, a holistic picture, a holistic way of living the people that the, that they didn't know existed prior. And retreats are, are are the way that we feel we can do that best now. So we run retreats right now in Guatemala, and later this year we'll be running retreats in in Costa Rica. Um, it's a it's a way to let's let's say you've never done yoga in your life, and you've never surfed in your life. Maybe you've never meditated in your life. Um, the cool thing about what we do and how we do it, you know, I like to tell people that I, I specialize in teaching yoga to people that don't do yoga or don't like yoga. Um, yeah. I, when you put yourself in an environment, you know, a, a beautiful place, you know, paradise like El Paradon, Guatemala, like lava, black sand beaches, um, beautiful waves. There's a, you know, a space that's very contained and beautiful and full of life and flowers. And um, it allows you to kind of, let the dust settle, you know, fade away. You put your phone to the side. You're not worrying about emails. You're you're in a space where all you're worried about is, you know, what you're going to choose for your breakfast smoothie and, you know, what time you have to show up for yoga. And if you sleep in a little bit, you sleep in a little bit. Or am I going to catch the sunset tonight? And then before you know it, you leave the trip and you're like, my God, I'm, I've changed. I can't put my finger on it, but something has shifted in me and I'll never be the same. And that That's really the mission to spark that flame in people. Would you mind talking about your personal yoga journey? I know each you know, each person has their own unique journey within yoga and, and what it does for them, but um, I think yours is is fantastic. Yeah, so so when I started yoga, the, the first time I ever got into a studio, I was practicing on a beach towel uh, with a, a buddy who was a tanker who was, you know, big two, you know, big dude. You know, in the, in the high two bills and up um, and we're both practicing on beach towels and we have no idea what we're doing and we're looking around us and there's all these, you know, young fit women that, that are bending over backwards and, you know, twisting in all these ways. And we, we knew we stood out like sore thumbs, um, but there was just something about it that was just that was like a feeling I'd never felt before. You know, I went in there thinking, OK, you know, my back's messed up, my body's messed up, I'll be able to stretch and then you know it'll be good. But I started to feel what peace might feel like. You know, I started to feel, um, you know, what healing is possible just by simply by being in the room and, you know, being around that energy and that space and, you know, uh, a group of people that were really welcoming towards uh, towards anyone that, that wanted, you know, to enter the room. Um, so I went from practicing one or two days a week to three to five days a week. And then before I knew it, I was in the studio practicing constantly and it was it was hot vinyasa so i stuck with with hot vinyasa for for a while and i even became uh before my last deployment i was certified as a yoga instructor a 200 hour uh hot vinyasa instructor and i did that with the with the goal of bringing it overseas with me so the, my last deployment was syria and i knew i was going to be on a, a tiny little fire base and there was you know not very many and I knew there was going to be not very many people with me, but the miss the, the mission was vigorous, and um, it was it was a it was a tough place to be in tough conditions. So I thought if I at least was able to deploy with the ability to create peace within myself and then help create it within others, then 
you know, maybe it could be successful over there. Not even with the goal of doing anything, but, but helping myself and others get through deployment. So when we went overseas, we, we stopped in Qatar on the way to Syria. And it was at the height of COVID, or not the height, it was actually like the beginning of COVID. It was, you know, March of 2020 or June of 2020 that we deployed. Um, so they had us in this little like containment camp. So it was a bunch of um, like barracks and in a fence and there was yeah. literally nothing to do. It was rocks, dust and, and, and us just waiting to, to push. Um, but the, you know, the, the first full day we were there, I said, well, I'm going to do yoga today. I'm just going to, I just need to move. There's nothing to do. I need to settle my mind. I'm, I've got my nerves going cause we're about to, you know, get in country. And so I took my shirt off. I found a, a, a cardboard box and I cut it up like one of the pallets for water. And I cut it up and I, I, I rolled it out. I'm not rolled it out. I placed it down and I took four big rocks and I just placed them on all four corners of the mat. And so I said, oh, because it was windy. So like, this will hold it down. I had no music. I had nothing. Um, so then I practiced in the middle, in the middle of our little quarantine camp and it felt great. And I, I had like a, a great time. I was feeling the sun. I was moving. But the next day I had another person on the mat with me or on a cardboard box with me. And the next day I had another person on a cardboard box with me. And then we, and then we deployed, then we got in the country and we got in the country. Um, we had, you know, team houses and I started doing yoga on the roof. And the two guys that were, that were practicing with me in Qatar started practicing with me in Syria. And as more people started to hear about it, the group expanded and, you know, you have, um, you know, three letter agency, you have contractors, you have, you know, members of the ODA, you've got some psyopers, you've got support folks, you got, so everybody that was like this, this melting pot of people that, that may not have associated, you know, around the fire base, you know, generally are now all doing yoga together on the roof of the team house with, you know, helicopters flying and generators going. Um, but then, you know, walking off the roof and saying, man, that was, that was amazing. That was what I needed. And that feeling as a teacher was really powerful because, you know, I thought to myself, if, if I can create peace in this environment, then I can create it anywhere. Um, and it, it was really empowering. And it really helped me get through that deployment. Being able to teach others gave me, you know, obviously I had purpose on mission, but coming off mission, you know, I'd, I'd be, you know, talking to um, an allied country's intelligence officer in the morning. And then, you know, maybe I'd, I'd be talking to a three letter agency you know, later that morning and then I would be on mission that afternoon. And that, e that evening I'm teaching yoga. It was it was cool because it was such a departure from our daily life there. Um, yeah, it felt like it felt like we could we could be people for just a little while, you know, not soldiers for a little while. So I yeah. came home from that deployment and I started teaching in the studio, which was the last thing I ever wanted to do. But, I, you know, I wanted to still teach. I didn't know that I wanted to teach in a studio until I started teaching in country. And I came back to the States and I realized that the style of yoga that I had developed teaching people that had never done yoga in that situation or never done yoga period, but especially in that situation, um, that I was teaching differently than, than the teachers around me. So I, I taught in the studio for a while and, and, um, you know, we, we went on a couple, we taught a couple retreats and I continue to teach for nonprofits around the country when I'm asked. Um, so now, you know, stepping into the retreat space, I truly feel, you know, after all these years of, of just kind of grinding through it, figuring out that, you know, as American Yogi, that I'm stepping into, you know, my craft as a, as a healer and an instructor. So now my classes are completely based on the energy and what I'm getting from my students. You know, I have a framework, but I'm able to adapt to whoever's in the room. I imagine you're probably, you probably, you American Yogi doesn't sell the cardboard boxes, but you probably have some other things on the website. Uh, you want to talk about that? Yeah, we do. Um, so we have accessories, you know, we sell malas, which help with meditation and, and breath work and also just grounding. People like to carry them. I carry them in ceremony. Uh, we sell T-shirts. So, you know, this this is one of our, our T-shirts. Um, every shirt has a, has a really deep story behind it. I design all the shirts. Um, we get it printed by another veteran uh, company. Um, everything is, is done in-house. Um, but yeah, AmericanYogi.com. Uh, T-shirts are the main drive, but we also have accessories as well. We get mats shipped in from India. Uh, they're actually yoga rugs with a, a rubber bottom. They're the most amazing uh, thing I've ever practiced on. It's all I'll practice on. Uh, we get those kind of seasonally. Um, but yeah, and I, I'm always on Instagram. You know, people 
people are constantly, you know, messaging with questions about products and questions about upcoming products and retreats. And um, I like to stay very fluid and dynamic with it. So it's not on the website. You can usually, if you hit me up, I can find it. Awesome. Hey, hey, I appreciate all the time today, Phil. Do you have any, you know, final closing comments for anyone at home or, you know, someone who's maybe interested in getting into yoga? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I've got two comments. You know, number one, uh, the something about the the veteran community. You know, be this being about being a veteran entrepreneur, um, we are are so uniquely poised to be able to be, you know, our own bosses, to be able to, you know, manifest our, our own destiny, if you will. Um, so it's amazing to see other veterans who have an idea and then decide to take that risk and push forward with it. So if, you know, if you are transitioning, if you are getting out, I can't recommend more, you know, using the, the resources that the, that the army or that the military gives you on the way out and trying to pursue that dream. And then as far as yoga, it's kind of the same, you know, if you're, if you're in a place where, you know, you feel like you need a shift inside and you don't exactly know what might, you know, be the solution for that or be, might be even just the first step for that. Um, I highly recommend, you know, stepping on the mat. You know, we have classes on our website. I would love to see more veterans at our retreats down in Central America. Um, I'd say just take the plunge. Awesome. Yeah. I uh, I hope to get out there one day and, and practice with you. That'd be amazing. Um, but hey, I wanted to thank you again for for joining us for Vetrepreneur Spotlight for the month of March. Uh, hey, everyone at home, make sure you go on and check out Phil's website, American Yogi. Uh, we'll put the link down below. Uh, his stuff is available on there as well as on our website as well at shop.nationalbmm.org. Um, so, hey, I appreciate all you did today and continue to do with us, Phil. Um, but, hey, uh, everyone at home, I want you to make sure you go out there and you're making sure you're shopping veteran. Thanks.